down those cards. Fortune tellers! Cards mean different things at different times. Do you know anything about tarot cards? Oh, <laughs> Gather around, children. Listen to the mystics. <laughs> Journey. Podcast. I'm no mystic. Welcome to Tarot Tangents. This is our shorter segment where we hit on higher level topics about anything and everything tarot. If you've got questions, stories, or just a good old rant that you'd like to share, drop a comment below or send it into tangents at mysticfooltarot.com for a chance to be featured. So in a previous episode, we introduced tarot birth cards. In this episode, we're covering a high level interpretation of two pairs of birth cards. Pair number one is the tower and the chariot. And pair number two is the devils and the lovers. Heck yeah. I have to say something right off the bat. I feel like these are two of the most powerful. Oh. These two pairings elicit the most amount of feelings for me. My favorite thing is to know the people who have these as their birth cards. Because I'm always like, man, I don't think I'd really want those as my birth cards. Like, I really love mine. And so I, I just, I don't feel bad obviously i mean there's no bad tarot cards but it's just like wow those are some pretty emotional cards to be having they are some super emotional cards and like we we will dive into that because i would say that probably the tower the devil and the lovers individually are probably aside from death are are, are like three of the most like you know like you said they're either like Feared, or they just have like a lot of emotional baggage connected to them even the lovers because you know a lot of people look at that one and they get the romantic love that's what they're looking for but yeah of course we're gonna get into it and like obviously i want to know if any of our listeners have these as their birth cards and you know what they come out thinking afterwards after this episode yeah Hopefully... what do they think of them right yeah what do they think of did you like them is this the first time i feel like i really resonate with my cards but yeah. like resonating with the tower card feels a little hard for me so i would love to know if people like really how people with these cards really you know vibe with them me too so please write in all right well instead of speculating too wildly we're still gonna speculate a little bit let's dive into our first pair the tower and the chariot so together the tower and the chariot tell a story of transformation balance control and handling obstacles challenges or moments of upheaval if these are your birth cards you may be drawn to challenging and questioning the status quo or what society and social systems expect of you and others i think a lot of times people think of these cards especially the tower as external events that happen to them but you can be the force of change you can be the catalyst for tearing down old ways like you can be the one that embodies the tower as just as much as like things can happen to you externally that you didn't have control over you can be the force of change so the chariot in conjunction with the tower does add a very important aspect of balance willpower and self-control to the mix So although we can be the force of transformation, the chariot advises that we be deliberate with our choices and actions without being overbearing or coming in like a wrecking ball, if you will. Yeah. And like, once again, just another like really perfect pairing for birth cards. And it seems like, you know, I mean, similar to astrology, you can kind of connect anything to anything, you know, that sort of thing. They're kind of vague enough to do that. But really perfect pairings in terms of like, contrast and like balancing out one and the other you know yes exactly like that's the i think that's what we have been finding with most of the birth cards is that they actually complement each other in very interesting ways so that way you don't you know and i think that's the whole thing is like learning balance because you're learning how to embody masculine and feminine how to embrace your shadow and your light like life is full of all these facets so of course the birth cards are going to complement one another because We don't want to be too much of just one thing and forget the other parts of life. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the two cards individually, just kind of as a high level, if these are your birth cards. So the tower. I think many of us are familiar with this card, and some may feel a little apprehensive about this being one of their birth cards. Like you mentioned, Ruth, people are probably just like, oh, no. People who might not know much about the card, or they're like, oh, my gosh, what does this mean for me? Don't worry. It does not mean that your life is destined to be a hot mess. That's not when it's a birth card. That's not really what it's talking about. So while the tower 
is all about upheaval, that can mean many things depending on your perspective. So upheaval can take the form of transformation, revolution, shaking up the status quo like we mentioned, breaking down old, unhelpful, or harmful habits, beliefs, cycles, to make space to rebuild something better. So the tower can be a very good card when you change, when you when you pull a hanged man, if you will, and change your perspective and look at it in a different way. And um, the tower advises us to welcome that transformation and take an active part in it, even if it's hard, because it's going to suck way more if we don't, if we just kind of like give up and like let it happen to us. A lot of times when I see people interpreting the tower card, you know, there's usually two people falling out of the tower. Um, and oftentimes one is like flipped upside down as if they had no idea or like they just weren't prepared and didn't see it coming. And then the other person is kind of facing forward as if like, okay, I knew something was going to get shaken up, but at least I am like prepared to land on my feet. I'm going to like face it head on and, and take part in it. I think with the tower, like one thing about it that always stuck out to me is that there's no sense of complacency anywhere in this card. Like it's a full on action card and it's not going to let you stew in your shit. You know, it's going to move you forward and force you to take that action, which is very positive in the end, you know, might not, it might feel uncomfortable from the start, but it's, it's always a good thing to keep moving and shaking. Oh, heck yeah. And I would encourage you to look at like different artwork interpretations, like outside of the Rider Waite Smith. There's one that I particularly like. Um, I'm going to have to look it up. I think it's like called the Everyday Witch Tarot and the tower card, like the tower is falling down, but the witch in the image, she's like smiling at you. She's just like, I, I did this because I knew it needed to happen. Like, I, it might mean starting over, but it's clearly like someone who has taken control of a rocky situation is like, you know what? Let's do it and let's face it head on. So maybe you're a person that like is like into that, <laughs> like you're into facing challenges. All right. So the other card, of course, like we talked about, is the chariot. And it speaks of bringing balance and taking intentional actions to overcome obstacles and achieve goals. It encourages us to understand ourselves, our flaws, shadows, our desires, our strengths and weaknesses, our interests and disinterests, and harness like all of these aspects of who we are to work together towards our goals. So it's kind of like the point of having, there you have the two sp sphinxes, right? Yeah, you do. Mm -hmm. Black and white. Yeah, of course I don't have my cards in front of me. Why would I do that? That's smart. Um, <laughs> and then you have like the black and white sphinxes that are carrying this chariot forward and symbols of all the sides of ourselves and this person that has total control over the situation so there's a lot of determination focus and self-discipline represented in the chariot and it's this kind of inspiring card because it reminds us that we have the ability to navigate all the twists and turns life throws our way which of course pairs perfectly with the tower and all of its insane action-packed imagery yeah the chariot's one of the coolest cards in tarot to me for sure and i think i'd accept having the tower as one of my cards if i could have the chariot as well it's a really a perfect pairing it's a super strong card and is all about like being the warrior in you know all things and just like harnessing up everything you got available to you and and getting through it and it's a complex card but it's still very like you know simple in the sense that it's got a goal in mind and it's going to achieve it. Heck yeah. You can step up and you can you can pretty much handle everything that comes your way. So if the, ta if the tower and chariot are your birth cards, a few challenges that these cards kind of warn about or caution us about is control. Control is a big theme in both of the cards. Obviously, the tower looks like it's a lack of control. Chariot is control, but you can always have an overactive version of it where you're too controlling. So together, these cards ask you to look at areas of your life where you are being too controlling, as well as areas where you are giving up or giving away your power and autonomy when you should be taking a more active role in your life. So TLDR, find the balance in transformation. Don't go full tower mode and be a wrecking ball. And don't be a micromanaging charioteer. Charioteer! Charioteer! <laughs> But don't let life just happen to you or like let others speak and decide for you when you could be taking the reins and navigating your own life. Ooh, so good, Anna. But don't.
So good. A great pairing. I am absolutely stoked to be talking about this next pairing, Devil and the Lovers, because I think, like, what's mind-blowing to me with birth cards, and we've already talked about it, you know, just now. We were talking about how every birth card has a pairing that is, like, the equal and perfect opposite to the other, and that's really awesome, but the Devil and the Lovers is really where, like, synchronicity in tarot really blows my mind in this topic because like the devil and the lovers are perfect match even just art wise Mm -hmm. like this the card structures are absolutely identical and how did we come up with this like system of birth cards where like it just so happens that these two are like connected that's like one of those synchronicities that really is like Okay, is there some a little more to this? You know, mm-hmm. that's the kind of thing that gets me. Oh yeah, and we're we're gonna go, we're gonna deep dive into that right now because it is, it is, it is the perfect pairing. It's just like, mwah, chef's kiss, figured it out. So as Ruth mentioned, this pairing has duality all over it. I know I talked about duality. There's a lot of duality across tarot, and that's the whole point because there, we talked about it with like the strength and the star, but this one ridiculous the cards mirror each other yeah they both show a pair of individuals one masculine one feminine both show a divine or otherworldly being overlooking the individuals the devil has the darker color scheme the lovers has the brighter color scheme if these are your birth cards then you may be drawn to themes of passion striking a balance between giving and receiving love in all of its forms Um, integrating the divine with the worldly and recognizing the beauty within the beast and the beast within the beauty. So TLDR, I know, the lovers and devil are all about learning to unify all parts of ourselves and life into one glorious experience. Man, it's so, so awesome. This pairing is awesome. Right? I was like, man, I understand these birth cards more than I understand my own. (laughs) Yeah, right? Literally, like, these ones are so straightforward because, like, the devil is, like, you know, you can interpret it in many ways, but to me, it's a very selfish card. Like, it's all about, like, self, self anything, like, expression, importance, determination, and, like, going after what you want and what your, you know, what your gut's telling you. But the lovers is, like, all about, you know, cooperative thinking and partnerships and that sort of thing. And so it's just, it's just great. So tell me more about, about this pairing. What's, what's the deal with these cards singularly? <laughs> Heck yeah. So we're going to start off with the devil. Dun, dun, dun. Woo. I love this card. I think this card gets a bad rap simply because modern religions and even entertainment have sold us a very specific version of the devil that's like only pure evil and sometimes comically cartoonish and flat. Right. <laughs> just like my disclaimer with the tower. If you have the devil as one of your cards, you are not destined to be, like, a constant victim of addiction or evil forces. No. No. Like, like Ruth said, like, there's other meanings to both of these cards and same thing with all of tarot. Even more so, like, it's fun to poke fun at, like, the tower card because it's, like, a scary card and it's all about, like, you know, craziness and there's people falling from buildings and stuff. But when it comes to the devil card, like, um... Pretty anti any mainstream meaning or interpretation or poking fun at the card just because it really is tied to a lot of like very like physical things like, you know, it's there's been so many things that it's tied to like addiction and that sort of thing when really let's not be associating that card with these sorts of things. Like just because you have these as your birth card doesn't mean, you know, you're destined for any of that. Let's really push back on the regular narrative the devil card has. Oh, hundred percent. So yeah, let's let's dive into that a little bit. The devil recognizes that we are physical beings with desires, kind of like Ruth mentioned. We're like it might, in like its like overactive form, become a selfish card or a materialistic card. But in general, it's about recognizing that we are physical beings with physical needs. And so while it does warn us not to overindulge or become dependent on those materialistic things. Um, It also asks us to acknowledge and allow ourselves to enjoy life's sensuality, luxuries, good food, cozy beds, you know, things that people might consider like, I don't know, 
just like extra or like gluttonous. You're like, you, there's once again, this is all about this balance. And so the devil represents one side where we do live in the physical world. There are things we enjoy. And yes, you can overindulge in them. But there's just as much danger in depriving yourself and restricting yourself of what makes life worth living as there is in overindulging in it. Overall, the card to me is saying that you can find like happiness and fulfillment all inside yourself. You don't need other people to kind of get this to like kind of fill this hole in your heart for you. You have all the power in the world to like make yourself happy by yourself from everything that comes inside of you. That's really what the card speaks to me. I love that because I also see that meaning in the lover's card, which is great because they're together. Ooh, do you? Ooh, I do. So yeah, all right. The lovers. At first glance, everyone seems to think of romantic love or finding a spouse when they see this card. But it is, like the devil, so much more than that. And I'd argue that romantic love is the least important meaning of this card, especially when we're talking about birth cards. Because when you're looking at birth cards, you're not looking at anyone else but yourself. So The Lovers depicts unions and accepting and embracing all versions of, we, of who we are, the parts we like, the parts we don't like, masculine, feminine, and integrating all facets of ourselves into our lives. So I think of the phrase, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts which alludes to that third entity in the card when we choose to acknowledge and work with all the parts of who we are, when we're compassionate towards ourselves, when we give as much as we receive, we become a better version of ourselves than if we had ignored parts of ourselves or denied parts of ourselves, which is why this works really well with the devil because you have the lovers, which is very like transcendent and enlightened, but you have the devil reminding you like, you still have this physical form and you should be incorporating that into your life. And both of them are all about like, you have everything you need inside you. It's like one of the most popular cards in the deck. Everybody loves the lovers and it's easy to interpret because it's about relationships and love, you know. But if we were to like step outside of like those sorts of like connotations, to me, the lovers is about, you know, anything that is opposite in life you know, accepting them both at the same time as they are. You know, it's not necessarily trying to change or anything. It's about whatever situation, there's going to be good parts and bad parts of it and trying to, like, take those both in stride is kind of the goal of this card for me when, when you step outside of, like, the relationships or other people's sorts of aspects of the card. Heck yeah. So it's still about unions. It's just, like, you and unifying yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. And then, of course, the cards together are about unifying your physical and your spiritual being. We love it. But the last little portion of these two birth cards is, of course, the challenges. So the name of the game here is compromise. Talking about those unions. Yay! Yay! So both making compromises with yourself, like between your wants and needs, and compromising with others externally, like finding balance between you and your friends, you and your job you and your partner, you get it. So on one extreme, the cards caution against being too individualistic, like Ruth mentioned, being like selfish, hyper-independent, and becoming too attached to one way of living and existing, which can leave us isolated. On the other end, they also caution against being too codependent and giving up our voice and freedoms and autonomy to someone else, to something else, whether that's a person, a job, a substance, a family. So you once again, it's all about unifying and balance and recognizing we both have physical and spiritual needs and bringing them together. It's all about balance. It all comes back to balance with these darn birth cards. They're just always equal and opposite mm -hmm. meanings to each other. And you find balance in so many different ways. A hundred percent. With these cards. And these ones are like the devil and the lovers is just a perfect and the tower and the chariot, honestly. They're, They're really perfect good. depictions of like what birth cards are and how they play along with each other in, in your life. Yeah, I would say that uh, for anybody, like regardless of what your birth cards are, you can always pull them out. And if you're like, hey, I'm feeling like I'm leaning too heavily on this codependent lovers thing. Well, then start looking at the positive aspects of the devil. And you can do that with any pair of birth cards. You're like, well, I'm leaning way too much into 
the chariot side and micromanaging things, well, maybe I should just let some things happen, like in the tower, but be prepared. You know, it's like one of those, they balance each other out so well that you can, like, look at them and be like, which one am I leaning too much into? Like, what's the reverse? What's the one that's kind of in reverse for me? I should look at the other one to help balance it out. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of the whole shtick with tarot is the beauty of it is like they're very all cards have multiple meanings and are very interchangeable with each other. And mm -hmm. just using these your birth cards as a constant or, you know, deciding on, you know, how they play into your life, looking at those as examples. I feel like it's very good for me because it's like the avoidance way of coming towards the feelings in a very avoidant-y way. I can kind of use these cards as like a little like way to drive it over there to where I need, but in a much nicer way. Yes, they are, they're usually gentle. They're a little more gentle than other ways you can figure out life. <laughs> right, absolutely. Well, hey, don't forget to subscribe and drop a review so we can find new fans, tell your friends, and follow us on all the socials. Our handles are Sweet Death Inc. and Mystic Fool Tarot on all platforms. See you later. We did it. Mm -hmm.